This is a short lecture about power series. First of all, let's get to know what power series is and what makes it different from other series that we have seen so far in this class. Well, the first thing you should know about power series is that it is an infinite series. So let's make a note here. Power series, also an infinite series. So power series, also infinite series. This means that you can expect the terms of power series to keep going and never ends, just like other infinite series that we have seen, goes to infinity. All right, now back to the power series. There are two special things about the power series that makes them different from others. So let's talk about the first one. The first one about power series is that it has a variable. All right, this is very important. Has a variable. And we usually use x as the variable inside the power series. But it's not, it's not wrong to use y or z, but it's just, uh, it's just not, um, not popular to do that. All right, so we have a variable. What this means is that we are going to have a freedom inside the series. We have the freedom to change this value, which is different from the other infinite series that we have seen. Everything has to be fixed the way they are. In this case, we can change this x value. All right. Now, the second thing about power series is that it has to be built at a certain location. So there is something specific about that. So let's put, uh, let's make a note here. It has to be built at a location, or you can say at a point. And we usually use A as that point, as that location. You can use B or C if you want. All right, so these are two important things about power series. Now that we know about them, let's take a look at the pattern, or you can say the formula of the power series and what they look like. So let's take a look at the first box here. This is about a power series that is built about this location x equal to a. So we take a look at this for a moment. I don't want you to just memorize it. And as I told you before, that power series is also infinite series. So it's not surprising to see this sign right here. It's about the sum of all these terms to infinity. All right, so now about the pattern. So let's take a look here. The first term is this C of, uh, with the index of n. As you, well, the thing you see here is a constant. And since we have this index, it means that this constant can be different for each term. So for the first term, second term, third term, and go on, it can be different, but it has to be constant. So we can make a note here, this C has to be constant. All right, now let's move to the next term. So there we have the, the variable right here, which is x. x can be, um, can be anything. You have the freedom to choose the value for x. And then we have this location that we built this uh, power series at, which is a. And in, in the end, we have this uh, power of n for this, uh, this term of x and a, like this. So there you go. This is the format, or you can say the pattern of this power series. So let's take a look at another popular form of power series. And that happens when the location is 0, a equal to 0. Sometimes we call it x equal to 0, but I, I like to, to say that a equal to 0. So as you can see here, this is the same as above, except that a equal to 0. So a goes away, and you have this another form of power series. The reason I have to bring up, because you see this a lot, it's quite popular. But in the end, it's the same thing, except that yeah, the location is at zero. Okay, now we know about the two important properties of this power series already, and we also know about the, the formula, about the form. Um, we need to know more about that, about this power series. We want to know whether they converge. Well, as you know, it, when it comes to power series, it's always this question. Is the series going to converge or diverge 
something like that. We want to know about that. So here is the same thing. We want to know the convergence of the power series. But it's going to be a little bit different because here we have the variable. All right? So we have the variable, which we have the freedom to choose. So it's not just asking, is it going to converge? We are going to change this question a little bit to be what values of x make the series converge. But once again, it's about the convergence. So the main question right now is about the values of x that make the series converge. So let me um, emphasize right here, it's about the values of x. So the focus is this values of x that make series convergent. So we want to find the good x, all right? So once you've found that values of x, it's going to be a range of real numbers, and we are going to call it interval of convergence. It's a terminology that you need to know. Interval of convergence. Since it's quite long, I'm going to call this IOC. So this is basically the value of x that makes your uh, power series converge. All right, so that's basically it about the information that you need to know about power series. So let's take a look at some examples here. So we have four examples. The first thing we are gonna do here is to find out whether they are power series. So we are going to compare them to the formula that we have um, at the upper part of the slide. Some of them at the first glance might not look like the ones in the formula, but let's see if they are the same. Now let's take a look at the first one here. So uh, we can see here that this is an infinite series because we have this infinity sign. But then we have this x to the power of n. And if you try to compare this to the, um, to the formula that we have above, we can say that if cn equal to 1, right, and if a equal to 0, then these two um, expressions would be exactly the same, right? So in the end, you can conclude that this is a power series, all right? This is a power series. So quite obvious. Now let's take a look at the next one here looks a little bit different, a little bit messy. So um, at first glance, they don't look the same. They don't look the same as this box. But let's try to move things around. Let's see if we can make them match. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, well, I'm not going to talk about this infinity sign. It's obvious by, by, it looks, by the way it looks. Well, this is infinite series. So the first thing I'm going to do is to keep this the same, and I'm going to take 4 out of the um, this parenthesis term. I'm going to take 4 out, but this 4 must have this power of n. All right, And then what's left inside would be just x plus 1 over 4. And everything, uh, the power here is the same. Okay, Now, I'm going to combine this minus 1 and 4 together. It becomes minus 4 to the power of n, and this x plus 1 over 4 to the power of n. And as you can see here, if I make this cn, then it's going to match with the formula. And from this, I can say that I can make a equal to minus 1 over 4, and then everything match. So here, also a power series. Good. Now let's try two more really quickly. So let's take a look here. I'm going to do the same, the same thing. I'm going to move things around. So here I try to um, separate the 1 over 10 to the power of n out. 1 to the, over 10 to the power of n. And I have this x minus 2 to the power of n. So from this, I can say that, hey, I'll, I'll make this cn. And from this, I can say that a equal to 2. So there you go. Same thing. 
So this is also a power series. Now let's take a look at the last one. Move things around again. Well, I should use red here. First of all, I'm going to put 1 over n at the front and then I'm going to take 3 out of the parentheses. So with 3 out, I need to bring n power of n out too. So inside, I have this x minus 2 over 3 to the power of n. You can try to multiply 3 to the power of n back into the parentheses. It's going to be the same. All right. Now, with this, I'm going to call that these terms c of n. All right. And as you can see here, with the different values of n, c is different. And with this, 2 over 3, I can make it equal to a. All right. So all of these are power series. And as you can see here, you have x. And x can be anything you want. All right. So that is the first thing we try here to determine whether the series we see here is a power series. The next thing we are going to do is to find the good x the interval of convergence. We want to find out about what values of x that makes these series converge. So let's try to do that. All right, so I, I bring one of the examples here. That is minus 1, so um, the second uh, example. And here we want to find the values of x that make this convergent. So that is our main goal. Find values of x that make this power series convergent. Power series in other words we want to find IOC interval of convergence. So how do we do that? In order to find out about this, we have to rely on some tools. And we talked about these tools in the last lecture, the tools that we can use to determine the convergence of an infinite series. So let's talk about that really quickly. So um, test that we can use to uh, determine the convergence. The first one that we learned is nth term test. Well, with this, you can tell something about the infinite series, whether they are going to uh, converge to any value or diverge to infinity. And we also have this alternate series test. We can use this when your series has um, this alternate sign between plus and minus, alternate series. We also talk about the the ratio test, all right? And we also talk about root test. We can use these to determine the convergence. So you have to pick one for this example. But since I see this power of n right here, I'm going to try the one, the first one here, ratio test. You can try to use the root test, but I'm going to go with ratio for now. So when it comes to ratio test, if you can recall, it's about checking a certain value. And that value is the limit of, well, when n approaches infinity, of a ratio. And that ratio is a n plus 1 divided by a n. We want to find out about this ratio when n is really large. And not just that, we need absolute value here. And let's make that equal to c. All right, I'm going to, uh, well, about this test, once we, you, you get this C value, you have to make a conclusion. So I'm going to put the guideline here, just in case. So if you find this C value, and if it turns out to be less than 1, then the series converge, converges. If C greater than 1, then the series diverges. But if c turns out to be equal to 1, then it's inconclusive. 
which means that you cannot tell. You don't know. So we are going to find out about this, this one because we want to know the x that makes the series convert. So we want to find out about this c less than 1 because it converges. And of course, we have to check about this one too because this is inconclusive. It could diverge, it could converge. So we need to check these two in this case. Now let's talk about a n here. So here, this would be a n. So we have this a n equal to minus 1 to the power of n, 4x plus 1. Now that we have uh, we have chosen the, the test and we know what a n is, we can use it right away. So let's do that. So I'm going to find out about this value limit when n approach infinity. The first term here is a n plus 1. So that would be minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 since this is n plus 1 term, right? So next one is 4x plus 1 to the power of n plus 1. All right, divided by a n, which is minus 1 to the power of n and 4x plus 1 to the power of n. Absolute value. All right, and as you can see here, this can cancel with that, and this can cancel with that. So in the end, I have this equal to, let's keep the limit here to make it clear, n to infinity absolute value of minus 1 times 4x plus 1 and this would be equal to c. Alright, let's find out about the c value. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to split this absolute value to 2. Um, well, I need some space. Let me erase this. Alright, this minus 1 so um, instead of having one absolute value, I'm going to do this same thing. And as you can see here, absolute value of minus 1, it has to be 1 always, right? So here we have this limit of absolute value of 4x plus 1. n approaches infinity must be equal to c. Well, I shouldn't say must be. We said it e to be equal to c. And as you can see here, this limit doesn't matter here because we don't have any n inside, right? So this limit doesn't matter now. So all we have is this. Absolute value of 4x plus 1 equal to c. And we are going to check with the condition that we want it to happen. That is the first one here. We want to check this condition c less than 1 because it's going to convert and we want the conversion to occur here. So we are going to check c less than 1 and c here equal to absolute value of 4x plus 1 and we want it to be less than 1. Now let's solve this inequality. So we have this 4x plus 1 less than 1 and greater than minus 1. 4x less than 0, greater than minus 2. And in the end, we have this x less than 0, greater than minus 1 over 2. This range would mean that c is going to be less than 1. And with this, it also means that your series is going to converge. series converges. That's exactly what we want. So here we have this range from minus 1 over 2 to 0 and this power series converge. Alright, now, but this is not done yet because we have to check another condition which is this, when c equal to 1. Because from the guideline, c equal to 1, it's inconclusive. It could be anything. So let's check on that. So we already got this. This is good for sure. Then we have to check this. C equal to 1. 
let's see what happens here so c equal to 1 let's check with the absolute value c equal to absolute value of 4x plus 1 equal to c oh sorry c equal to 1 right so this is going to be equal to 1 which means that we have two cases here 4x plus 1 equal to 1 and 4x plus 1 equal to minus 1 and let's solve these equations so we have this x equal to 0 and for this one x equal to well minus 2 over 4 so that's minus 1 over 2 so these two values would make c equal to 1, which is inconclusive. At this point, I want you to notice that these two values would correspond to the endpoints of the range that we found before, this. This range, right, equal to that. And this, x equal to 0, is the right endpoint, or you can say the upper bounds of the range that we found before. Okay? Just want you to, to see this uh, that two values match here. Now, these two values are inconclusive, so we have to check on them more. So let's check about these two boundaries values. What happens when x equal to 0? Let's check x equal to, well, let me use blue here, x equal to 0. We need to check that. So what I'm going to do here is to plug in this x equal to 0 into the original power series, into this. So 0 would go to here, all right? So what happens here is that, well, sum here is the same, 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of n, the same. Since we have 0 right here uh, for x, 4 is going to go away to 0, and we have this just 1 for the back terms. All right, so that's what we have, and let's combine them. This is going to be equal to sigma from n equal to 0 to infinity and minus 1 to the power of n. So what we look at here is a series that has alternate 1 and minus 1 value. And as you know, it's never going to um, converge to any certain value. It's going to keep switching between 1 and minus 1. So from this, it's quite obvious by itself, but you can use n's term to make a conclusion of this n's term test or alternate, alternating series test. Alternating series test. And from, from these two tests, it's going to tell you that this series is going to diverge for sure. So for this one, diverge. Diverges. You know, 1 minus 1 never ends. Now, we know about this x equal to 0, diverge. So that's bad x. All right. So we have one more thing to check, which is when x equal to minus 1 over 2. So I'm going to do the same to put this minus 1 over 2 back into the series. So it's going to go to here, minus 1 over 2. All right, so let's do this step by step. Sigma n equal to 0, infinity, minus 1 to the power of n. So minus 1 over 2 goes in. This becomes minus 2 plus 1 to the power of n. So from this, it's going to be equal to sigma n equal to 0, infinity minus 1 to the power of n and inside this back parenthesis you would have another minus 1 to the power of n and you can combine them and in the end you have this uh, infinite series from 0 to infinity inside would be just 1 to the power of n so we are talking about this 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 goes to infinity of course this is going to get infinitely large and by using nth term, you can use n, nth term test. And it's obvious that this series is going to diverge as well. 
which means that x equal to minus 1 over 2, also a bad x, diverge. So we don't need to include these two in the range that we want. So now back to the interval of convergence, the main goal of, of this problem here. Interval of convergence. or IOC. These are the values that makes the power series converge and we found them to be this range. About the endpoints, both diverge, we don't need to take them here. So for this one, interval of convergence would start at minus 1 over 2 and ends at 0 and we do not include the endpoints so it's going to be open ends. And that is the, the values of x, the, the good ones. Okay, but um, there is another word, another terminology that you need to know about this, uh, this topic, and that is the radius of convergence. So let's add it here. Radius of convergence. I'm going to call this ROC. It sounds a little bit strange because it's not a circle here. Why would, why would we have a radius? But let's think of this. Radius of convergence is about if you stand in the middle of the interval of convergence, how far can the x value changes before the series becomes divergent? So if you stand in the middle of this, like this, right in the middle, how far can you move to the right or to the left until it goes out of bound? All right, that, that's what it means. But in terms of calculation, this is basically half the length of the IOC. So let's make a note here. The radius of convergence is basically half the length of IOC. And that's quite easy to find, right? 0 minus minus 1 over 2 divided by 2 and from this you know it's going to be equal to 1 over 4. Okay, for the radius of convergence. Alright, so that is the first example. We find, we found the IOC and we found the ROC. Let's do one more really quickly. Alright, this one is going to be a little bit different. So we have this uh, infinite series, and if you move things around, it's going to come out to be power series. So we want to find IOC. Find IOC and ROC. Okay, so um, here we have a few tests that we can use, those um, nth term ratio root. But since I see this n right here and n right here, I'm going to use ratio test. So let's try ratio test. And once again, when it comes to ratio test, we find this value, the limit when n goes to infinity. Absolute value of a n plus 1th term divided by nth term. All right, let's find out about that. Limit n goes to infinity. And let's take a look at this example. Uh, and a n plus 1 term would be this. 3x plus 2 to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now, for a n term would be quite the same less uh, fewer by 1, smaller by 1. So we have 3x plus 2 to the power of n divided by n. Okay, and let's keep continue. Uh, let's n to the infinity. I'm going to flip the denominator up. So we have this 3x plus 2 
to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 all right times n divided by um, 3x plus 2 to the power of n all right and now we can do some cancellation here this 3x plus 2 to the power of n can cancel with that all right so I'm going to arrange things and make it look like this n n plus 1 at the front times 3x plus 2 at the back all right and just like before I can split the absolute value to each of the terms here so I'm, I can do this split the absolute okay now you can see here we, we need to apply the limit of n to the infinity to this term and that term as well so let's do that limit of n goes to infinity of n divided by n plus 1 times the limit of this 3x plus 2 and as you can see here 3x plus 2 doesn't have any n so I don't need to apply the limit so this is just 3x plus 2 with the absolute value okay now let's take a look at this this you can apply the L'Hopital rule and this is going to come out to be just one you know this is the coefficient in front of these two terms you, know, you can diff the upper part and the lower part it comes up it comes out to be one so um, this is going to go away to one so in the end we have this 3x plus 2 well, let me save some space just in case. Absolute value of 3x plus 2 equal to c. And just like before, with the ratio test, we want c less than 1 because this is uh, uh, this corresponds to convergence. So this 3x plus 2 absolute value less than 1, which means that 3x plus 2 less than 1 greater than minus 1. 3x less than minus 1 and minus 3. Okay, and x less than minus 1 over 3 and greater than minus 1. Okay, let me check the solutions here. All right. Um, okay, I know something is wrong. Okay, I don't want to uh, erase this problem. So, can you fix uh, this sign with me? So this is minus, and so far I use plus in the calculation. So let's change that. Sorry about that. This has to be minus all of them. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so this has to be minus, minus, and minus, and minus. All right, this too. Well, all of this have to be, have to go away. All right, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. All right, looks good now. So 3x right here would be less than 3 and greater than uh, 1. All right, so which means that x is going to be less than 1 and greater than 1 over 3. Okay, so this corresponds to c less than 1. Okay, so this is definitely convergence. Convergence here. But then, we cannot stop here. We need to check this condition too, when c equal to zero. All right, so let's check that because that is inconclusive. So we are gonna check when c equal to zero. c equal to zero, but just like I pointed out in the previous uh, example, 
this condition would happen would occur at the endpoints of the range that we found. So it would occur at x equal to 1 over 3 and x equal to 1 at boundaries. x equal to 1 and x equal to 1 over 3. So we have to check at these two points. So let's do that. Let's use blue, uh, green. So first one, x equal to 1. Let's check about this point. So I'm going to plug in this x equal to 1 back to the series. So what I have here is sigma n equal to 1 to infinity. 1 is going to go in here and it's going to become 3 so the upper part would be 1 to the power of n divided by n and this is going to be equal to this same terms 1 to the power of n would be 1 and as you can see here this is harmonic series you can try to use the um, integral test to show that this is going to diverge but as we know harmonic series is um, harmonic series is going to is is divergent so this you can say that this is harmonic series or you can use integral test to show that this one is divergent so this one is definitely divergent Now we need to check at the other endpoints and that is when x is equal to 1 over 3. So let's find out about that. Sigma from n equal to 1 to infinity. This time instead of 1, 1 over 3 would go, would go here. 1 over 3. Alright, sorry about that. 1 over 3 goes here. That would be 1 and I'm going to have this minus 1 to the power of n here and this is n. In the end I have this series infinity minus 1 over n and this one is alternating harmonic series alternating harmonic and it's known to converge but in this case, you can use the alternating series test to show that this is going to converge. All right, this one is, you can use the alternating series test to show that this one is convergent. All right, so what this means is that x equal to 1, that is bad x, but this x equal to 1 over 3, this one is good. So the interval of convergence, IOC, once again, it's going to start at the range that we found before, and that would be 1 over 3 um, to 1. All right, But then we don't include the x equal to 1, we don't include this one, so this is going to be opened boundaries. But this one, x equal to 1 over 3, that is a good one. It converges. So we are going to make a close um, end on this side. So we have IOC starting at exactly 1 over 3 and ends at 1, but before, uh, right before 1. All right. And about the radius of convergence, that would be half the length of the IOC. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 divided by 2. And of course, this is going to be equal to 1 over 3 for the radius of convergence. 